But they had provided for themselves was insufficient. It was right there. It was not enough. But God did something that would be sufficient. And I look at this today. This is not characteristic of just non-believers, but in many cases today, believers in Jesus Christ, we know He watches, we know He knows everything, but we settle, we compromise, and we are ashamed. I think of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Paul writes here to a very corrupt church, a very fleshly-minded church, the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5. Therefore, says Paul, judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. There's a time coming, says God through Paul to the Corinthians and to us. There's a time coming. There is a judgment, a task, an evaluation. God will make it all clear someday. We're in this point of transition. We're in the middle of things. Ask Rose's question, is there something better? A Puritan from hundreds of years ago named Ralph Bennett wrote regarding our God. Because all this has to do with him. We're his children. He's our father. What about God? Then he wrote, as God is holy, all holy, only holy, altogether holy, and always holy, so sin is sinful, all sinful, only sinful, altogether sinful, and always sinful. Sin is sin. Sin is death. And it's out. Satan is out to get our minds. Get our minds. Again, our best seller lists, our books short, books, books for shelves are full of apparently best selling books critical of God, critical of the Word. And probably a couple of this room could name some of those authors, Hutchins and Dawkins and others who are swaying hearts and minds and cutting apart the faith of Jesus Christ, the, uh, the faith of our Savior. And those things should hurt and they do destroy things. They, they cause great harm. But greater than those rather frontal attacks are those attacks on our minds that will subvert us and move us from a firm, steady belief and faith in the truth of Christ. Our minds are being taken over. I ask you this morning, what is your mind occupied with? You come home from work, you come home from the workbench, you come home from the machine, or from the road where you labor, you come home, and you, you fall on the couch. Be careful about giving your mind to what the world is offering your mind by way of media and entertainment today. Their, their reasoning is not always just money. Many are out to change us. Many are out to change us. I read a study by a woman sociologist. She actually read through carefully the sermons, 47 sermons. Some of the sermons were by Baptists. Some of the sermons were by Presbyterians. As she analyzed them, she was looking for an emphasis on them as far as the holiness of God, a call for repentance. Almost none of those 47 sermons that she studied had any reference to either of those great necessities. Even today, we find the church and we find it even ministering. We come up far more easily today with 10 reasons a Christian can and should balance their budget, or six attributes to look for a future spouse, each back biblically backed up. We find out all sorts of things about the functioning of our lives and mom and dad situations with children, let's say. Those are not hateful or destructive things. There isn't too much preaching about holiness anymore. And the true, devastating, dangerous things regarding our minds. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9 and verse 10. 
have Nathan before David, who is king, but he has sinned horribly. Nathan is given the awesome job of going back and confronting David. You are the man, David! You're the man! And notice in the scripture, notice in the scripture, why have you despised the word of the Lord? Why have you despised the word of the Lord? And God says, you despise me! You see, our sin, and our sinning, we do hurt ourselves, we hurt others, and we hurt God and despise God. And so sorry is our loss and our failure as we contribute to that loss and failure. Our testimony is dispersed as our mind fails. We give in to Satan. There are some sins we hold them as rather acceptable, especially if someone is silent. You know, when I was a boy, it was about 12 or 13, I got glasses for the first time. I've tried contacts a couple times in my life, not recently. My eyes don't even like water, so I never had great success with contacts. I've been stuck with these lousy glasses all my life, since 12 or 13. I knew instantly my professional ball career was done. But I also... <clears throat> I also got a reputation as being a studious person. You know how people can be fooled by if you wear glasses and keep a sober look on your face? The glasses are big. The glasses are big. And uh, just the sober. I was born sober. I was born really sober. And you probably think I'm extremely fair. Mediocre as anybody you'd ever want to find. Seriously. Seriously. You know what? Uh, we are easily fooled. We think some things are acceptable. Some things are fine. You know, there are certain things, as long as we don't mouth them, it's not necessary that others even know about it. We saw Psalm 50 that God knows. Psalm 139. God knows what we're about. It doesn't take a big close, close look. He can tell from afar. He knows everything about us. Now you and I fool people all the time. And we're acceptable. And our sins are acceptable because they're not hurting somebody else. But God knows who we are and what we're about. And we've got our list of things. Yeah, we know we're sinners, but now that's like Harry over there. Not like Judy over there. No, sir. I'm not a Mary. No sin acceptable before God. And we can refine our actions or refine our motivations. We can refine and distill down into very fine materials our, 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 our purpose. And we can be sincere. You know what? The Bible doesn't say much about sincerity on its own. If my young friend is thinking that God looks at his regular routine of of quickly reading the word and praying as acceptable in his sight, in God's sight, he is totally 100% wrong. Sincerity, of course, from the heart. But my boy, my friend, needs to do something with the truth he's heard and declare God as Lord. And change. Get out of that bed. Now and change and obey God. God's got lots of laws. Don't be confused by the fact that there's such a multiplicity of laws. 700 laws or so, Old Testament. Don't even get confused about there being the big ten, ten commandments, or the ten you think of the big two. Hey, listen. What do I need to worry about is obeying? Not dissecting the law. Obey. Obey. James chapter 2. James chapter 2 and verse 10. You know, in sports, in sports, you have sometimes with all the officials all the officials hanging around, you have all sorts of things going on by way of how the no, no, the whistle will blow. They have something in basketball, I know, that when you commit a foul, 
and it's uh, potentially a foul that could end the career of a posing track player, especially you can get suspended. You can get fined and thrown out of the game and suspended for a period of time. It's called a flagrant foul. An outrageous and atrocious and unbelievable foul. You're out of here! Most of our sins are our own mind. Many of our sins are from our minds and our hearts. They make they lead to things like enviousness. Are you envious of someone? Nobody else in the whole world knows it. Are you unforgiving? Is there a grudge or a leveling that you insist upon? Are you unforgiving? Nobody knows it. You're carrying it pretty well. We have sins that we think are normal, everyday sins, shared by all and therefore acceptable in the eyes of God. Not so, says the Bible. There's not such a thing as grossly fragrant flavor that is horribly worse than just, I, I've been so surprised, haven't you, when you read the New Testament list of serious sins, find one of them is almost always a liar. Now, what is, how about a liar compared to, say, adultery? Well, to me, that's like Major League Baseball in the minor league. That's, whoa, that's so nothing, that's so nothing, lying because it's all of us do it. And I know a lot of us are now committing adultery, but there's no way there's surely a difference. What about flagrant sin, flagrant fouls? I'm not a committer of those. No. You know what? When I was a boy going to school in upstate New York, 75 was passing. You know what it is in public schools here in the city now? 65. Is it 60? 65, I'm going to say. 65. And I think, what is this thing? Time that change from 75 to 65 over these years. I don't know if you heard the radio this morning, but on WCBS they had this little note. Statistics show that in America, one out of every four American young people do not graduate from high school. In cities like New York City, and it's worse than Cleveland and Indianapolis and Detroit, but New York is still up there. If you live in a city area, it is not that bad. It's even worse. Far more than one out of every four get through high school. Do you know what the average wage is today, right now today, in 2009, for someone who is in the working world and has not a high school diploma? Not talking about college, but has a high school. 14000 You know anybody in this room? Do you, are you living? Raise your hand up. You're living as one individual on fourteen thousand nine hundred dollars. If you are, got any hope of having a spouse someday, children someday, other than a studio apartment someday? Think of what I spend on dog food for my dog, and licenses, and veterinary. Yes. 
his contribution. It takes his view of it. Sometimes we think everybody else is doing it. You know, vicariously, many of us are living in other people's sins. When I was a boy, my parents were going through a divorce, as did divorcees. I was just a party to that, an observer of that. Was I ever affected by it? Absolutely, in every day of my life since. That's why your marriage is important. For one reason why your marriage is important to them, too. Because of your children, always. But I wasn't the divorcee, or one of the parties, the main parties. I was just an affected. I was affected by the thing. And we think that we're unaffected. We are. When I was a boy, my family was going through that. I can remember at home, the TV was always on soap operas. And the magazines were true love stories. I confess to having an avid hatred for the soap operas and soap opera living. And material that describes flagrant, fleshly living. I urge you to make some choices as to what is in your home. The book of Romans, chapter, chapter 6, and uh, chapter 6 and verse 21. I know I had this verse marked. That's fine. Acts chapter 6, and uh, verse 21, Paul again, writing, says, What fruit had ye then in those things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Paul says in Ephesians, this is the way we all were living or on the road to living before we got saved. Things must be different now. Things should be different now. Look at the consequences if that is not our case. Romans 6, Romans 6 and verse 21. What fruit? What were the results? And friends, it's usually garbage in and garbage out. You and I need to be careful about our minds. And we don't allow the garbage in. We have some standards and some statements, some sayings, some position regarding the, the garbage. But what will come out will be garbage. Again, that verse in Psalms 101, verse 3. I will set the wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of those who turn aside. It shall not cling to me. It shall not cling to me. I don't care about Uncle Joe. I don't care about grandma. I don't care about my boy. It's too late. I'm going to take care of who I am. <coughs> that there might be the beginnings of a difference. For those older and superior to be look back on and hopefully regret that they had not lived that way. And for those following me to look at that life and to say, oh, that's the way I want to live. Quick Bible reading it. 
prayer, or we can't play it out of any adequate church or anything else. The promises of God are to you, the individual. And will you claim them and will you obey them? So verse 14, Titus chapter 2, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify. We need to be purified. We need to come before God and seek forgiveness and cleansing. Because of his great love for us, we need to be open to change. Open to change. Purify unto himself a people of his own zealous of good works. Closing scriptures found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. What? says Paul. This is hard to What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Who is in you? I think implied is here, don't doubt it. He is in you. He is in you, whom you have of God. It's not your own production that you have the Holy Spirit within you. You have the Holy Spirit because of God and His placement of the Holy Spirit within you. And you, because of all of this, are not your own. It is not about Randy Rose. It is not about any individual in this room. It is all about it. Verse 19, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. You have all this of God, and you are not your own. Verse 20, you are bought with a price, because all that is true. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Who owns your body? Who owns ultimately, certainly? Your mind, your soul, God. Who owns your spirit? It is God. It is always God. It's all about God. Please, don't be someone who ticks off. Yeah, I read the Bible. Yeah, I pray. Hopeless. Tragic. Have you ever bowed to me? said, God, I believe. Do and be whatever you want me to do to be. I believe your word. I submit unto you, O oh God. I'm going to get out of the bed. I'm going to put on clothes. I'm going to go out there and live a life of faith. Trust in you. It's about you. It's about you. That's right. Follow me. not threadbare, be not diluted, but that we have rich lives, full lives, meaningful lives, contributing lives. But Lord, let us not rest until we have such lives in Jesus. We know you are with My God, we need men and women in our church of substance. This city needs Christian folk of substance. Make us to be men and women, young people of substance for Jesus. You deserve the best. Our Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name.